let's take an inventory. Unemployment non-existent, check. GDP soaring, check. Trade imbalance addressed, check. Nuclear threat reduced, check. Terror seems at bay, check. Things are looking up. Why is that? If only the flag had arms to hug him back. <laughs> Feels like a good run for everyone. It is. Satisfaction with the country's direction has reached a 12-year high, while trust in the mainstream media drops to another low, which could be why the press has gone nuttier than an elephant's diarrhea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That means it worked. <laughs> for as it becomes harder to deny something is working, the harder the media works to show something is wrong. So how do you smear America as the Third Reich when it's not? You lie. Take Time Magazine's cover. This weeping young girl became the media's poster child for evil Trump separation policy. But turns out she was with her mother the whole time, and her mom, according to dad, took the child without telling him. Now, maybe your husband's bad, I don't know, but I do know the media spread this photo like a common cold just to keep the evil alive. Meanwhile, a feverish dolt is coming for you. If you vote for Trump, then you, the voter, you, not Donald Trump, are standing at the border like Nazis going, you here, you here. And I think we now have to flip it. And it's a given the evilness of Donald Trump. But if you vote, you can no longer separate yourself. That's the next step. Everyone's a Nazi. Now remember, <laughs> once you brand someone as evil, that allows for any or all behavior. You can show up at people's, at people's homes because they're Nazis. You can threaten their kids because they're Nazis. You can shoot congressmen because they're Nazis. Funny, the people shouting Nazi do a great job impersonating them. If Donnie Deutsch got any dumber, he'd be two Donnie Deutsches. <laughs> Because what he's mad about actually happened before Trump. The only change is the guy in office. Brooke Baldwin, a rare exception, she got it right. Here's a question for Democrats. So many people in this country are certainly outraged by the cages and the thermal blankets and the facilities housing these kids. You know, they were all there in 2014 under President Obama. And my question to you, Senator Baldwin, is did you speak up against them then? You know, on, the, on this issue that we get into a moment where we're making progress and then when it, uh, when it stalls, uh, we turn around. I don't, I don't think those were words. Talk about a deer in the headlights. That senator, she just got mugged by the truth in broad daylight. So people now care about the problem because it's Trump. Good. Imagine if you had four more years of some Democrat, the human trafficking that happened under Obama would still be largely ignored. It's true, this abuse happened while he was president. Even the liberal website, Snopes, agrees. But then the press forgot that they covered it because amnesia won't interrupt their anti-Trump tantrum. So now Trump owns it while trying to stop it and solve a greater problem. Fact, long-term fixes have short-term setbacks. Adults get this. Children never do, and by children I mean the media. Their outrage is unaccompanied by an adult solution. We know separating kids from parents, that's bad. Leaving kids with traffickers, that's worse. But I applaud those for waking up to an issue they slept through under Obama. But Trump is succeeding, and that's their nightmare. And even if Trump compromises, it's not enough. In their game, the goalpost is on wheels. Here's the current liberal opinion. Split up a family temporarily, you're a Nazi. Keep the family together, you're also a Nazi. <laughs> but as for a solution, they freeze. They don't need solutions, all they need are feelings. Here's a former Obama official explaining how to solve the immigration problem. I wish that I could bake a cake made out of rainbows and smiles and we'd all eat be happy. She doesn't even go here. <laughs> Do you even go to this school? No. I just have a lot of feelings. It's all you need. So the left called Trump Hitler as Trump handles North Korea, trade, jobs, terror, etc. That's the opposite of Hitler. He's a Gandhi, 
and orange Gandhi. <laughs> Which is why the left is losing it. The latest, of course, is Peter Fonda. Hmm. Yeah, he's lost his motorcycle and his marbles. <laughs> this brain-dead basket case suggested kidnapping and assaulting Donald Trump's child. What did I say before? Deem someone evil and you can do anything to him. And so the liberal manifesto has been boiled down to two words, F you. Actually, that's one letter and a word. But instead of professional suicide, Fonda has a movie coming out. What Roseanne did was zilch compared to this. The double standard thrives. But it's not just Fonda, every celebrity, they're all dull conformists. They think alike, talk alike, at times they even walk alike. Here they are on the red carpet. <laughs> no wonder they hate Trump. He's a bigger star and he's more entertaining. What would you rather watch? Sarah Sanders reducing Jim Acosta to a puddle, or Peter Fonda trying to eat peas. That's all I can take. But it's not about kids, really. It's about 2020 and a willingness to cleave a country over it. Luckily, America gets it. A new poll has a large majority believing the media is inherently biased. As optimism in the country grows, and as more people reject the mainstream media, journalists get furious, like mean girls uninvited to the prom. Hence the mental chaos, the threats to Trump's son, shout outs to Hitler, tweeted pictures of death camps. The world's crumbling. It began when Trump was elected, when Paul Krugman and his ilk then predicted, of course, economic collapse. Wrong again, you jackasses. <laughs> the economy is on fire, which is the only reason you can afford therapy. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. He has more punchlines than a high school dance. Writer and comedian Joe DeVito. She's so sharp, her parents never gave her balloons. She's attorney Emily Capano. Misery loves her company. National Review reporter Kat Timph. And there is no deep end in his swimming pool. Former WWE superstar, massive sidekick, Tyrus. All right, Joe, we know this is a tough subject. Nobody wants to separate kids. What is irking you? Well, I think that senator missed a perfect uh, opportunity. That's when you pretend your microphone and earpiece don't work. <laughs> yes. And you don't just start fumfering like if. You believe Trump is that bad, then you don't need to make fake photographs and you don't need to t repurpose photographs right. from four years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a serious issue and it should be treated seriously instead of ignoring it the way the people who had the reins of power for the past eight years did. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy and there's going to be a, a lot of suffering, but I think what pisses off the left the most is the idea that there are people who want to come to the United States of their own volition. <laughs> That's what drives them nuts. Because if, if that means that the United States is not the worst racist hellhole for non-white people, then their whole value system gets exploded. Mm, that is an interesting and very perceptive uh, thought. I do what I can. <laughs> All right, Emily. You are the legal mind. And I want to ask you, isn't, is, is basically Trump's sin is trying to enforce laws, and he'll enforce a law if they change the law, right? Isn't that kind of how he is, or...? Right, that's exactly what's happening, is that he's trying to enforce the law, but he's running into the same conundrum that Obama did, which is essentially, if you please the masses, then you're not enforcing the law, and if you enforce the law, then people are up in arms. And I think this issue is, it's an iceberg. And the reality of our southern border and the nine border sectors of it is that it's not just about the drug cartels as being these linchpins. It's the messaging, first of all, that's been oversimplified by both sides. Mm -hmm. And also we have to think about what's pushing and driving these people so desperately desperately to our borders and right. what is the pull factors that we have on our side attracting them, which right. includes now catch and release and, and mm -hmm. under the former administration. So um, I think the, the journalists that are doing the best work there, people like Brandon Darby and Aura Bogato, they're amazing because they're not subscribing to that messaging and they're really committing to the fact that it's actually diplomacy, which is where we need to put our efforts. And that there's a lot of, there's a lot more people involved in these cartels that are financiers and bankers and attorneys in these places 
that, that they are far more powerful than the actual cartel heads. But again, messaging just reduces it. So how are we to actually combat these Central American pull factors and push factors if we don't actually know the whole picture? Mm, Emily, you smartest stuff this week. <laughs> Cyrus. Cyrus, it, I uh, feel like... My, my mic ain't working. I'm not following. <laughs> I was going to say. Ask me about Dennis Rodman. All right. Uh, Dennis Rodman is going to Honduras to. No, no but uh, uh, we were talking earlier. It's like, it seems like the left got this is Christmas for them. <laughs> you finally got one. Yeah. But they don't know what to do with it. They're right. like a dog chasing a tire. It's like, oh, we got him. We, 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 and they just fumble it away because they just don't know how to play their hand. Right, right, right. The they way, overplay the hand. Yeah, it was a bad week mm -hmm. for Trump. When he does well, we have to say, mm -hmm. good job, Mr. President. And when he has a bad week, we're going to say, hey, mm -hmm. pull it back. The pundits didn't handle it right. Everybody kind of went into business for themselves. And they said whatever they wanted to say and because it's an ugly thing. Mm -hmm. But here in the States, and this is something that, on, on the social media, I kind of got into it this week, was like, when, if someone in this audience has their children in the car with them and they get pulled over for misdemeanor and they go to jail, their kids go to the system. Right. Like, being arrested and committing a crime is a rough, ugly thing. Mm -hmm. It affects a lot of people. And your children, if they're with you, yes. if you're choosing to break the law, mm -hmm. they go to the system. Yeah. Now, I understand the reasons why... You, you're coming to this country, I get it. I grew up in California. I was around a lot of immigrants that were coming in. One person, awesome. And <laughs> for the most part, for the most part, they were there to work, raise their families, like, you know, and they worked hard. Like, right. So I kind of have, big, there's also that bad element. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to screen because even if you let in 500 great, hardworking, mm -hmm. soon to be American citizens and one of them's a mass murderer, mm -hmm. that's one too many. Yeah. And we have to screen and we have to vet and we have to do those things. Cat, yeah. yeah. do you think it's, uh, where do you think this is going with the constant Nazi Hitler comparisons? I mean, is this ever going to end or is it, where is it going? I did not like the separation policy. Mm -hmm. Not a fan. Mm -hmm. Glad that it's not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Although I really just genuinely don't understand how it's like Nazi Germany. Yeah. I don't get how that's even a comparison. So I'm convinced that a lot of people maybe just don't know what Nazi Germany is. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I think it just kind of spreads like wildfire. Like they hear one person say it and they're like, you know, they realize that what they have to do to fit in with all their buddies is agree that it's Nazi Germany. Yes. So that way everybody, you know, or else you're going to think that you're a jerk. So everyone just keeps repeating it yeah. without ever actually really explaining it. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you believe being a Nazi means being in favor of school vouchers, You've given yourself a wide range of people you can call a Nazi. Yeah. If you just include anyone who doesn't agree with you vociferously as a Nazi, that's how they get away with it. It's completely illogical. You know, I think you're a Nazi. Fair. But uh, you know what the well, for real? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, the ironic conclusion here, and I, I know I got to go. Uh, Trump gave a lot of these cynical hypocrites the wherewithal to do their job. Now the re this is a real problem that reporters are now going after. Mm -hmm. Only because it's under Trump. They actually care about the kids now. So it's actually, thank you, Trump, for making reporters care once again about children.